Hello, everybody. Uh, okay, it's very weird that I can't hear you, any of you, but I guess that's the answer to the feedback thing. Uh, hello, fellow Emac fanatic. Woo! Um, Hi, you're right. Sorry. I, I'm Captain uh, from uh, just couldn't make it, but uh, we uh, we're selling this place, and we bought a new place down the street, and it's all kind of going down right now. So. Uh, I'm going to try to share my screen with you. I'm going to talk a little bit about this thing I've been working on for six years at Google. Uh, it's actually reached the point where I'm turning it over to the team and to the guy who's been the tech lead for a while, and I'm moving on to other stuff finally. Uh, but uh, but I thought this was cool enough to share because this is going to be a this is going to be a big thing. So um, uh, so this is all. The, so uh, how many of you are even remotely familiar with a project I've been working on at Google called Grok? It's a semantic analysis thing. Have you heard of it? No. Okay, so great, great. So let me give you a quick overview. Um, so the idea is that uh, everything's moving into the cloud, so IDEs really ought to move into the cloud. And um, so the way you do that is you, uh, you know, you chop the back end off of your uh, Eclipse, or you chop the front end off of your compiler, like Clang or GCC or whatever, and you uh, run it in the cloud. And then you generate a big index uh, with all the metadata that you got from the compilers. Uh, uh, so uh, let's just share. I'm going to share my desktop. And now I should be able to search. Let's see. OK, so somebody give a thumbs up. You can see yourselves now. All right, good. OK, so I'm going to go to, let's see. I'm going to, first, I'm going to go to uh, uh, Grok Web. Which is an internal tool we have. It was one of the early demo clients. Uh, you know, where you can, it's kind of like an IDE. You know, it's read only, uh, but it's basically a, a graph viewer. Uh, Grok is not a search engine. It's, as you can see, our search was a technical term. Uh, 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 we actually do have a range, but I can show you in a little bit. Um, but uh, this 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 is all getting served out of our index. So this is some source code, actually for for Grok in the Google code. Uh, this is probably old code that we're not using anymore. We're about ready to retire it. But as you can see, it's filled with clickable link um, and uh, hover documentation because uh, we represent docs. Um, this is really spooky. It feels like I'm talking to myself at this point because I can't see. So I'm going to switch back every once in a while just to like assure myself that you're still there. Uh, what we have here is uh, an overridden dot. Um, I'm assuming that not many of you use Eclipse. <laughs> this being an Emacs class. And uh, so if you click on some sort of like reference, then you can see the cross references for it. Uh, it's boring. Uh, but, um, uh, well, this one probably has like a whole bunch of cross references. Uh, yeah, so we found 80,000 references to illegal argument exception in our code base, uh, and you can click on them and jump there, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, it seems kind of boring, like superficially. This is just like IDE um, stuff, being able to edit. But that's where the Emacs is. So I'm going to show you. Um, I'm using Chromoting, which is uh, the remote desktop uh, plugin for Chrome that some guys off weird developing. Uh, British guys, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna switch back to the Hangout. Make sure you're all there. Everyone's there. Yes, good. Um, right. Yeah. So the way Google does development is we have Linux boxes, uh, you know, under our desks that kind of um, run local builds, and then we, uh, well, we build everything in the cloud. Not much left on the Linux box. It's kind of just a shell. And um, I get all meta, and I actually work on a Mac that I shell into the Linux box, and, and that's just a shell, too. And you can imagine the key bindings are just a nightmare. Um, what you're looking at here is a file that is now only 7,500 lines, 7,600 lines long. This is the bulk of the implementation of the Emacs client for Grok. Um, and uh, 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 so, like, you know, you can start off with, a, like, say, a, a browse. Uh, and, um, oops, I don't know what that did, but uh, manually uh, browse. And uh, so that gives you, you uh, right, just, I basically I made a virtual file. You know how Emacs has this, um, uh, some let just implement these um, uh, 40 or so methods 
and that pretend to be a file system, and then you can make anything into a file system. So, uh, for like handler, so I set up the Grotto handler prefix to be grot colon slash slash. It's kind of like tramp, right? You know, um, uh, and what it does is it calls our service on the back end. Um, and, uh, you know, you have to handle things like, uh, is it a file or directory? Um, Uh, uh, give me some operation support or not. There's a little jump table, right, that says, um, or the little lookup table that says, um, you know, operations that are same as the regular file system handlers, operations that we don't handle, like delete file, because our index is read only right now, uh, and um, and so on. So that uh, that's kind of neat, because then we can actually just browse down into Google code, and I can show you a bunch of stuff that I probably shouldn't. Confidential stuff, you can't see. Um, whatever, it'll take us so far, so long to get down there, you'll you'd be dead anyway. Um, but if we go to DevTools, Grok, and then we go to, I don't know, uh, server. So here's some C++ code that implements our server on the back end. Um, and uh, here, so I pulled up a C++ file. I pulled this one out of the Grok index, so you can see a little banner at the top that says it's Grok, and it's at it's, it's the perforce change list at uh, 43 million. Um, we do a lot of changes at Google, and uh, and so on. Uh, it's got links in it. Uh, the links actually aren't usually visible by default, but um, I like them on because it assures me that my, my package is actually working. Uh, most people would go with with Hover, uh, and as you can see, uh, like I can go over any link and I can uh, I can hit return and I can get a little menu, or I can or I can um, I can click on it in in X. Um, how does this work? Right click. Mm, uh, uh, yeah, so again, the key bindings are really wacky when you're like showing in through a Chrome shell. and So we're just going to go with the regular, but there is an X menu also. It does the same thing. So I can see cross-references. I can see the call graph. I can see the documentation, if there is any, um, et cetera. Uh, if there's a file outline. I still, oops, <laughs> there's a file outline, and I'm just going to pretend that that didn't happen. Um, yeah. I guess we have a bug in our file outline. But still a bunch of icons from Eclipse. It's navigable, etc. cetera. Um, there's some, uh, some keys that aren't doing what I expected them to do. This is largely because I don't think I've, I only just switched over to Chrome loading recently. I was using, like, NX. Um, so it's uh, confused and thinks caps lock is on. I see that's a problem. Yeah, there we go. Now the outline is navigable. Now the keys work. Um, and uh, so, like, if I pull up, I don't know, JSON format, that looks like other people would use it. And we'll do cross references, and boom, you see the same thing that you saw in uh, in GrokWeb, which is we quickly pull up cross references, right? And uh, so uh, now, now the, here's where the real beauty comes in, right? If if I actually were to open instead um, my the one on my home directory, so Google source cloud TV source blah. Okay, now now Grok's gonna it decorated asynchronously as you can see. So the whole thing's asynchronous, and it's using a helper binary that goes and makes our RPC calls. I used to actually make the call directly from Emacs Lisp. And it was a little slow, and it was a little hard to maintain, and the helper binary was also needed for them. And so we just decided to, like, gut that. So I removed, like, in one night, you know, like 10,000 lines of list code and macros and stuff. And now it just calls, it just calls you know, call process or start process. Um, so uh, uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to talk for, like, three more minutes, and then I'm going to pause to see if there are any questions, and then I can get back into it. So let me show you what I can do. I can, I can G4 edit this file. G4 is our perforce, uh, you know, revision control system. And as you can see, it redecorated the file because the major mode changed, and the links are all there again, but now the file is editable. So I can, you know, delete this. And, um, uh, well, so kind of t two things happened. One thing happened that we expected, which is the links are still there, and they're still actually negotiable. Um, I can do, like, control-C, control-comma, um, X, and I can see um, uh, that there are multiple links at this location. Because C++ generates a lot of crap whenever you have a macro, like a text macro, right? So I can go to one of these links and check the cross-references for it. Uh, the thing that didn't happen is there aren't any errors or warnings saying, hey, look, your code is bad, right? Like via FlyMake. 
and that's work that's kind of in progress right now. But you know, the important thing was for us to get get sort of a, a version of this that worked with. So what's happening? Okay, so now here's the real beauty, right? Is it, let me say if I just delete, I'm just going to delete like a big hunk of this file. I'm going to delete, you know, this. Okay, now I've just deleted like a, a bunch of the file. Now I'm going to reopen it. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm just going to close it completely. So Grok doesn't know, Emacs doesn't know about it anymore. I'm going to open up my version of it. Now what's happened here is, oh, it's going to be impossible for you guys to see, but the little colored grok down in the mode line is now got an asterisk here, meaning it's patched. Isn't that the best UI ever? And uh, what happens is um, we actually run the diff algorithm. It used to be on the client. Now we do it on the servers. And we, we apply links uh, to the lines that, that, that haven't changed since grok last indexed this file, which was probably last night. So it's cool, which means that you don't need to use the grok uh, you know, diorid version, you just you just turn this package on and you start editing in your client and asynchronously it'll go find out if Grok knows anything about this file and even if it's not the same version and if it does, it'll decorate the file for you so you can get all that stuff. So now I've shown you sloppy editing, I've shown you patching. Um, I guess the only other kind of interesting thing is um, is if you go, uh, we, we've we've started capturing structured documentation in our index because it's you know it's rich. Uh, often people will stick HTML in there, or they'll have tags or links or or whatever sample code. Uh, and so <clears throat> a guy on my team has been um, collecting that stuff in our in our graph representation. And if I hit uh, H for see the help for this thing. Um, um, lowercase h, I mean, then uh, it shows me this. It shows me an actual rendered, like sort of like Javadoc-like view. And, you know, um, it's not too fancy, but if I go up to like a class, like class, uh, here, let me search for like multi-map, because um, that's a Google class that I can um, actually pull up data for. We don't have, um, we've, in we've indexed the OpenJDK, but as you can see, See, they're all lined out, all the references into this, this Java code. They're called lost nodes right now because we don't have cross-corpus linking. It's something a guy's working on right now, and that'll be fixed. But uh, indexing the OpenJDK is a huge pain in the butt for reasons that you really don't want to know. Uh, so anyway, here's multi-map. Here's somebody who's using uh, it. Let's go to multi-map. So if we weren't in multi-map and we were actually looking at, this has got a gigantic, ugly Java doc. I really have to see if you guys are still there. Yeah, everyone's still there. Good. So somebody just like went to do that. <laughs> Font size plus plus. Got it. <laughs> You're waiting for that. Okay, so here goes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we have a bigger font. Um, how much screen size can you guys see? Can you guys see? Uh... Oh, wow. Come on. Okay. Come on. Seems very sensitive, this promoting thing. Very sensitive. Got ya. Uh, okay. Can you see uh, the most of that Emacs window? Yeah. All of it. Okay. Got it. Right. So uh, this is a huge, ugly Java doc comment. Um, and it's ugly because they had to stick HTML in there, right? And, and Emacs doesn't like it because it's trying to parse it. And there's a lot of annoyingness going on here. But, uh, ooh, ugly, we've got bad links. That's never supposed to happen. Uh, never, ever, ever. In fact, I'm just going to reopen it and pretend I didn't see that. Oh, I wonder if that was, no, no. Okay, what you're seeing is a rare, <laughs> fortunately, comparatively rare bug that happens in Grok Emacs where the style run boundaries actually get off from the actual source code locations. Uh, it can happen when the file was modified locally without Emacs knowing about it. Um, there are some other situations where it can happen. It's pretty horrible. Um, and I'm embarrassed that it happened right during my demo. Uh, but let's just go to one of the users of this class and hope that they're good. OK, so they're good. Everything's lined out because it's all open JDK. But right here, we extend multi-map. It's not underlined because it's something. But we can render the documentation for it. And it went off and it called our service and it got the structured rep representation. Now there's some stuff in here like this ordered list stuff that's not working too well. And actually it didn't render anywhere near as prettily. It appears to have bit it in the last three weeks. How embarrassing. But um, at one point I was using the HTML R package to actually render, you know, the HTML. Yeah, I don't know why that died. Maybe somebody checked something in. Anyway, uh, you can kind of see where that's going. 
uh, technology underneath it. Um, let me stop and ask you guys for questions. How are we going to do questions since I can't hear you? Front size plus plus again, yes. Front size plus plus. Front size. Yeah, Emacs doesn't let you uh, do it for every buffer, so that sucks. I mean, you have to do it like a buffer at a time. It really blows. Unbearable, oh, man. It's the worst demo ever. Okay. Quick question for you, Steve. Hold on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be a party pooper, but so far I can't see anything with this that I can't do with a combination of semantic bovinator, g-tags, uh, uh, um, and, um, um, and, and ordinary frontification. Um, the, um, uh, but there is one huge disadvantage, which is that which is it depends on a Google backend. And speaking as someone who used to use Google Code Search until they dropped it, and who used to use Google Reader and is now being forced to switch to something else, um, what's the guarantee that this uh, server side of this won't disappear and leave us uh, uh, and leave us high and dry? As far as I can tell, there probably isn't one. So is the server side uh, uh, available so we can run our own? Well, is the server side available in some way? Um, he couldn't hear me. Oh, God. We <laughs> can't hear you. <laughs> Again. This is the password to download my There's time. There's time. Hey. Okay. So, uh, okay. So you can hear me talking. Good. Everybody's good. <laughs> Apparently, you couldn't before. All right, so should I, should I start back at the beginning of my answer to this question? Okay, great. All right, wonderful. So I understand the question. It's a great question. This is one of the things that uh, I'm going to be working on over the next year uh, with a new team. Um, internally, our service levels have been best effort, uh, which is kind of embarrassing, especially coming from Amazon where we had pagers and stuff. Uh, and um, uh, uh, so... You know, the way it works is, like, the service levels aren't really that great for people uh, internationally right now for Grok. And, uh, you know, the service has outages every once in a while. Um, and, you know, so worst case, what happens is you fall back to GTAGs, right? I mean, that's, that's the kind of, that's the answer that I give people. Um, that said, our availability has gotten better and better to where, um, uh, generally speaking, what happens is the service starts to get slow rather than being non-existent. If there's like, you know, some sort of big problem in a data center that we happen to be hosted in. 
Um, and it's, you know, it's going to become kind of more important, uh, you know, as a trust issue as we externalize this uh, via um, maybe code.google.com or if you host your code in GitHub or whatever, and we want to um, offer a code browser uh, for you. Uh, we, uh, you know, we're going to be announcing some stuff maybe at Google I.O. Uh, and maybe at OSCON this year uh, in this space. Um, uh, but, yeah. It's, it's, it's actually kind of, it's a good question because dev infrastructure inside of Google is not a high SLA, like, organization. Um, they pretty much support, like, f except for build and test, which, you know, happens in the cloud and has to, has to work. That has super high SLAs and has site reliability engineers and so on supporting it. But for the kind of, like, like the, 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 the nice-to-have services like this one, you know, it's just basically the engineering teams. And so, you know, and we have a bunch of dependencies that even if we wanted to be, like, higher availability, um, other people wouldn't. Oh, no. Okay, hold it a little closer. Hi. Anyone that wants to ask him a question has to kind of uh, tell it it's to backwards. Sasha, and then she's going to type it. <laughs> this is a super high-tech <laughs> Do not laugh. That is so illegible. <laughs> here, just type it in. Just type it here. Ah. It says... <laughs> Text is backwards. You're making me read it backwards, and it's moving. <laughs> Text in audio. Keep going. Can you can you type it for him? So the audio is gone now. Okay. So what was on the card? Okay. Good. All right. Great. So does that answer the question? Shall we go to the next question? All right. Does anyone have a question that Sasha can type so it needs questions. to be concise? <laughs> no, no questions. No, make one up. This is not really how I imagined it going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's a huge it's... crowd. My God, how many people are there? Uh, all, like, and, they, and, they, and they said that you guys are the hardcore ones that are actually still uh, left after everything. Yeah. Wow. Any questions for uh, regarding this project? Yes. Be e -list supporting uh, please, Google. joke all you want about Google Hangouts. I'm going to have to go back to the Hangouts team many of whom are actually in Kirkland with me, and um, gripe about it. A-list supporting Grok, that's really, really funny. That's really funny, man. I dream about that. You know, and it, it would actually be easier easier to write an analyzer for E-list than most languages, because uh, Emacs actually records a lot of the information that we need. Um, there's kind of a standard set of metadata that compilers need to emit uh, in order to be Grok, to sort of play along with Grok. It's kind of a moving target, too, uh, and we're going to publish it. Uh, and it's, it's cool because the whole goal of this project was to get compiler writers to play along with us and actually, you know, make the, make the metadata that they emit universal so that compilers and tool chains are basically plug and play. Uh, and we think it's doable, right? I mean, even across languages, um, you know, a lot of this stuff, I mean, everybody has, uh, you know, pretty similar entities, symbol tables, call graphs, syntax trees, um, you know, control flow graphs, that kind of thing, right? Uh, so E-List support in Grok would be like a 20% project for me because, like, if you're really, really uh, um, uh, optimistic, I guess you could say we have about a million lines of it, including all of the third-party code. So, uh, yeah, probably not going to happen, like, tomorrow since I've got other 20% projects. But, um, yeah, at some point. I mean, it's kind of less useful. I still find myself wanting it because you can't. It's hard to do cross references and, and things like that, you know. And it's going to fall down to the extent that stuff is dynamic. But whatever. Questions? Code search. We will be able to use Grok to do code search. Man, I really wish I could have been there.
Okay. Will you guys be able to use Grok? That's the question. <laughs> For code search. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So this is this is actually one of the key questions that, that I'm faced with in my professional life right now. Um, I want you to be able to. Uh, what we're launching right now with um, code.google.com is uh, – and, I mean, it, the launch is, if it's not out yet, I mean, I haven't checked, it's, it's, but it's imminent. Um, you can browse Chromium's, you know, the Chrome browser's sources on code.google.com. It's all open source, and it's hosted there. And uh, there is a code search uh, tool that doesn't have Grok in it, or it used to. It's, it's on and off. And we're making it official. So our internal code search tool, which is actually quite nice, is becoming external for Chromium, and it will have Grok data in it, which is great because it's kind of useful. All it is is basically a really fast text search engine, uh, you know, regex search uh, without Grok. And with Grok, you get the deep semantic linking, right? Now, the problem is uh, your build system sucks, okay? And you know it sucks, right? I mean, you probably hate it and don't even like working with it. It doesn't matter if you use Ant or Make or Maven or a bunch of hacked up Perl scripts. Um, your build system doesn't actually know anything about what it's building. Uh, there are very few hermetic build systems out there today that actually fully specify the transitive closure of all of the dependencies and all of the source files that need to be compiled or analyzed as part of the build. And this presents a problem for Grok, because what happens is you'll run an Ant task Right? Or you'll run a make target that's some shell script, and it'll go off and it'll generate a bunch of files, right? Or it'll, it'll copy a bunch of files around, and the build system has no idea that that's happening. And so when we go and we run the compiler in tool mode, which is what we're effectively doing with Grok, because we're actually running the real compilers in a special mode where we don't code gen, uh, and then we walk the symbol tables and so on, uh, it doesn't have all the information because your build system didn't specify it. So we're working around this problem, but we're going to start, you know, soon. We've got some prototypes. By actually running your build, you'll tell us how to build your stuff using some simple framework, I don't know, like Jenkins or whatever, and we will run it with fake compilers, something that pretends to be GCC, right, and it will gather up all the inputs. How we will run S trace, right? We'll figure out what files are getting opened and, and, and slurped on your file system, and we'll feed them onto the compiler and do our best to analyze it. And at that point, hopefully, you'll notice and say, "Hey, hmm, how come these files didn't get analyzed?" And we'll be able to give you, you know, at least some instructions for how to, uh, you know, to specify them. Longer term, I want to get the whole world switched to Google's build system. Now, even Googlers are not really convinced about this. It's not like the, the world needs another build system, right? But Google's build system is hermetic, and it does actually allow you to uh, fully specify a target in a way that allows for incremental testing. And everybody talks about incremental unit tests, but nobody actually pulls it off except Google, to the best of my knowledge. And Facebook, which is a bunch of ex-Googlers who copied us, okay? And uh, uh, parallel builds, right? You know, really, really high-quality parallel builds where you don't have to run make once in a while, just to make sure it's like correct again, right? Uh, come on, admit it. You do that sometimes. So, uh, so yeah, that's going to be a big part of my like my plan for the next two years. Um, and we're pretty aggressive about it. We've got senior VP buy-in on rolling all this stuff out. So, and I just got like twelve new people dumped on me. Like I'm never going to code again at this point. But, um, but I do have big teams, and so we'll be able to make progress here. What languages and backends are currently supported and which are next in line? Okay, what backends and languages currently supported? Yeah, okay, so one thing, I mean, you know, okay. the worst thing you can ever say to somebody's question is, go read my blog. But I did do a talk at Stanford for, for those of you who are actually really curious about the details of this project, okay? Stanford invited me over to their WEP colloquium, you know, what they really wanted was gossip, believe it or not, and the two guys, that, the professors that invited me were really sad that I didn't say any gossip, but I did give them a nice technical overview of Grok, and it's on YouTube. So, you know, just type, like, Yegi Grok or whatever, and it's like an hour long, and it's painfully boring. But if you're a compiler person, you know, or you happen to be a tool chain person, and you're kind of interested in maybe, like, playing along, it's actually got even some, like, some, some recommendations on how to start planning now. To, 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 to be able to plug into this thing once once it lands, you know, maybe next year. 
Um, the, you know, the short answer to your question is we currently support C++ with Clang. We support Java with Java C. We used to use Eclipse for both of those, and it really sucked. Um, it was it was awful. Uh, but now we use the real compilers. Uh, we support uh, Go and Dart, which nobody uses. Don't tell anybody I said that. And then we um, we support Python and JavaScript, which is actually quite interesting because those are many languages, and it's much more difficult to get you know static type information about them. But we do a pretty good job, and we do it through completely different mechanisms. With JavaScript, Google has a JavaScript compiler with a static type annotation system, and Google kind of writes JavaScript like Java. And we write millions and tens of millions and maybe a hundred million lines of JavaScript code at Google, more than anybody. It's it's crazy. And the crazy thing about it is Google is highly invested in JavaScript, but they're not committed to JavaScript. Like none of the senior VPs think that JavaScript or the current web are like sustainable. We're proving ourselves wrong every day, but they're like, no, there's gonna be some next big thing that comes along. And so they invest all this money in GWT, you know, or in Dart or whatever that you know the new shiny, you know, knight on the white horse is, and then nobody uses it. So, so I don't think we would personally, and I think we're going to learn that lesson. But um, in the meantime, like we use, we kind of write JavaScript like Java, and that's how we ma manage to make apps like, um, you know, Maps and, and Gmail and so on uh, uh, in JavaScript, right? Because we have a lot of static types, and the compiler does type inference, and it'll tell you what percent program your, your what percentage type your program is. It becomes this like mini game, right? Um, and with Python, we don't have type information at all, but uh, but we do have a type inferencer that an intern wrote and then I hacked on for a long time to get it productionized. And it does a good job. I mean, most Python code is pretty boring. It's not doing meta programming, you know, and you know all this like class hook manipulation. It's just going, you know, function foo class bar, right? And so it's pretty easy to like walk that stuff and and you know come up with. I'd say I think it's about 85, 86 percent coverage of all the symbols that you find in our Python code are actually like understood and, and, and linked. And then some internal languages, whatever, that only Google uses internally. So, you know, kind of four big ones plus go, Dart, Dart and Go, you know, which are new. And um, we're working really, really hard. So we actually had to put a moratorium on this. We had people contributing analyzers, uh, you know, and they'd be like, uh, uh, here, here's a Scala analyzer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody contributed a Scala analyzer for Grok. And we had to tell them, sorry, you know, you, you have to go away for a little while. Because what happened was each language that we added is, um, it's this feature matrix of, because um, we have all these features, file outlines, cross-references, syntax trees, control flow graphs, interactive editing, you know, and it grows and grows and grows. And each language with the, that we add, you know, multiplies that out for the team. And the matrix becomes really sparse. And then nobody trusts it anymore because uh, a lot of the things aren't filled in and they're like, they don't know what they're going to get for any given language, editor, feature combination, right? So uh, until we can actually turn this into like a formal platform where, you know, the inputs and the outputs are all really well defined by APIs or protocols or whatever, uh, and it can be run completely self-service, we, we can't really add any more languages to it yet. And we have so many other dimensions that we're trying to grow on, like quality of our indexing of existing languages, or like um, incremental indexing, right? You know, things like that. That that uh, adding new languages because we're inside Google has been lower priority. It will become higher priority in you know a year or two, probably three years actually. Okay, final question. Any way of participating okay, uh, in the project, question. sort of um, short of sending a CV or something? Ah, uh, yes. Um, so that's a good question. Um, I mean, like, okay, come on, raise your hands. Who's actually serious about that question? You like one person? Yeah, send me a CV. <laughs> well, um, we're we're gonna try to uh, we're we're gonna try to obviously that we can't do this ourselves. I mean, this is a standardization effort. It's going to become one, right? I mean, we're going to standardize how builds specify their uh, action graphs and so on. We're going to specify how compilers spit out data. You know, this thing has to be become open source and open standard and, and, and so on. And the first step is going to be for us to get um, – because it's a little weird. Some of, it, some of it can be run as libraries and some of it as services. So uh, we're going to get the service side of it worked out. 
uh, and then we're going to start drop. We're going to start trying to decouple our analyzers and, and putting them out there. But we're trying to upstream a lot of this, like push stuff into Clang and into Java C and stuff. So you know, I mean, yeah, the goal is to get you all to be able to participate in this and write your Emacs Lisp Grok analyzer. It really is. That's the long term goal. Um, you know, just give me. Um, I would say probably eighteen months, and then you should probably start seeing stuff like landing like me actually posting about it and tools that you can actually use things like that now that said i would love to see your resumes google's a nice place to work you know so feel free you guys seriously can reach out to me directly steve y at google just pay me or steve yagi at gmail um you know or even if you just want to chat or even if you want to talk emacs stuff i'm always up for that so man i really wish i had I'd been to the conference but are we going to do this again next year Huh? Is this going to be a thing? Sasha, mention the Okay, some people Channel. are a little uncomfortable. Uh, ha Hashimax on the So some of us, maybe I'll see you next year. Uh, Hashimax comp, sorry, on Freenode. Just mention that to him. All right, so I guess I'm done. So you guys have a great time. Go grab some dinner. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. You can just sign the audience.